start the recording. So the plan for this uh, hour and the half is to not speaking about projects. Uh, we will uh, not so briefly speak uh, about project after 7 p.m. Uh, and tomorrow and on Monday and whatever. Uh, today we are speaking about uh, instead Python and we will try to move on from basic uh, Python uh, uh, programming uh, features to something a little bit more complex uh, so that you can build up upon your project and create something let's say new also by leveraging on the uh, work of other people so the idea is to uh, start rapi rapid prototyping that is an action that you uh, will also do for your project at a certain point using python libraries and integrating with either local or remote services I in particular the starting point should be that uh, the starting point is uh, that you should have now after three hours in class and three hours in the lab some basic knowledge about python about creating a simple let's say application with python from scratch but often when you realize an application you can stand on the shoulders of giants that see that is reuse things libraries packages other program made available by other developers even with more experience than you and there are tons of libraries typically for solving your problem and in looking for libraries i would also like to teach you how to look for some libraries typically with an example and in general when looking for libraries to integrate in your project in your application in your program you should be uh, always keep in mind the, the KISS principle that stands for keep it simple stupid that is read as keep it simple comma stupid and the stupid are the person or is keep it simple stupid so as much simple as much stupid as possible this is a real principle it's not something that I uh, invented right here so if you look on Google this KISS principle it exists in programming trust me and what can you integrate in your program well you can integrate libraries you can integrate packages to provide more functionalities new algorithm to your own program so for example complex mathematical operation statistical packages interfaces toward the operating system we encounter last time the uh, math package in python that provide you also some complex mathematical operations so that you don't have to write uh, all the operation by, from scratch but reuse something that other people realize but also libraries and packages to integrate external cloud web-based services starting from the weather mm, to social net networks and something like that so how we can integrate Python packages? For sure, we need to import them in our program like we did the last time. So import math, for example. But that packages was already present in the Python core library. What if we need to uh, get other packages from other people in the world available uh, on the internet? And typically, you have to do two things. One is install them these libraries, this framework, these new uh, packages in your program, on your computer, and then you can import uh, directly in your program like we did for import math last time. So Python modules typically can be installed with a specific command that is this PIP. Mm -hmm. So if you open a uh, command line and write PIP, install a name of, the, of a package, you install that package on your computer and PIP is a provider of different 
packages, a lot of packages uh, about Python programming and the only things you need is the package name here. Well, PIP has a website with a lot of information that I will skip for now, it's not particularly interesting for this lecture and at this hour. Um, and obviously the same function is also provided to you by uh, PyCharm. PyCharm in the preferences as a way to install packages by reading these packages from the PyAP repositories. So you can either open a command line and write PyAP install whatever or look for whatever in the list of uh, program uh, libraries provided to you by um, PyCharm in their preferences. And we will do it after. So we would, uh, I would like to introduce you this word, this process, with an example that we will do together, or, or at least I will, I, I'm going to do here in my computer, and uh, about uh, realizing a Telegram bot. So Telegram is an external service for sure, it's a web-based cloud service, and uh, do, do you know Telegram? Yes. Do you know what is a Telegram bot? Yes. So uh, we would like to realize a bot that works on my computer in this moment, that interface with the uh, API provided by, uh, with the, the function provided by Telegram, the Telegram service, online service, to do something quite simple. But to do this, we will need to interface with the Telegram online service and we will leverage a library, a Python library to do this, to avoid knowing every details of the possible function that Telegram provides us in any way. There is this library, one or more library that we can use to ease the development task, to interact with success with um, Telegram. So we would like to realize a Telegram bot that, first of all, greet us when you start the bot. The second things that we would like to do is to have this bot acting as a textual parrot. So we write hello and the bot replies hello. We write whatever we want and the bot reply with the exact text that we write. So an eco service, textual, and then we would uh, modify that program to have instead of a textual eco, a vocal eco. So we write a sentence, we write some words, and the bots take this word, create a voice message, and give us back that voice message instead of the text. So how, yes, and this will be called MEI bot with great imagination. Uh, so what is a Telegram bot? You probably already know, it's a third party application. So it's something that was not developed by Telegram, but by other developer, other people, supported by Telegram, but not realized by Telegram, that let's say run inside the Telegram service and the Telegram application. We will use the Telegram application to interact with our bot like another person. And basically user can interact with bots on the Telegram platform in three ways. They can send messages, they can send commands and they can send inline requests. We will focus on the first two today. So messages are just textual messages, voice messages, exchanging photos, exchanging video. So free text, free messages that a user exchange with a bot and vice versa, the bot exchange with the user. Commands are specific information, specific keyword, linked to some specific, as the name say, command. So for example, when you start interacting with a bot, the bot automatically performed the start command. When you type slash help, backslash help on Telegram, you are calling the help command provided by the bot, if any. And obviously to realize a bot, you can leverage uh, let me open this core.telegram.org slash bots. 
you can leverage as a developer what telegram allow you to do mm? so in this page you say what can you do with a bot you can create a customized notification or you can integrate with other service gmail image uh, wikipedia youtube and so on accept payment and this is our, a long long list of things that you can do with your bot with also example uh, a list of commands specific api to call mm, to specific uh, instruction to call on the telegram service to interact to create uh, your bot and at this page there is also all the documentation of everything that is possible to do with the telegram bot as provided by telegram itself mm. here they don't speak about any programming language they just speak about features things that you can do and receive from a bot they don't speak about python they don't speak about java or any other language just a list of things that you can ask to a bot and the bot is able to provide should could be able to provide so how we can create a telegram bot well first of all we need to open telegram and look for a bot that is called bot father i already did this yesterday and this bot father will ask you for some information like a name of your bot and i choose emi bot and a username that must be unique in the entire ecosystem uh, differently from the name and that username must end in bot and i choose uh, mei 2019 underscore bot with this two information bot father will give you a token a string of letter a series of letters and numbers to use the telegram service and a link direct link to open the bot and have user speak converse with the bot so right now if you by chance open telegram and look for this bot you should find a bot that obviously does nothing because there is no uh, a program any program that answer to your question but there is already a bot that is called mei 2019 underscore bot so we, we need just this information with the most important are the name the username and this token that authorize any developer that has this token to communicate with telegram and answer as the mei bot so this token is specific for the mei bot and this token that we will use today um, is something that can be revoked cancel create refresh and so for example today we will use a token that was provided yesterday and then i will delete the token since um, this video will go uh, on the internet so everybody with this token could create and impersonate the, this bot in the world so i will delete the token and, and regenerate a new token so the, this token is a very private information that you should not share uh, so how will our bot that we are going to create work from a very very high perspective so we have the user that could be anywhere in the world and it's a telegram user that has telegram on its computer on his or her smartphone and so on we have telegram on the internet let's say and then we have the mei bot that today will run on this computer on this very specific computer so the bot will be here physically here so what what happens so typically the bots sometimes we'll ask to telegram do you have any update for me so someone is speaking with me so in this case that is the simplest case not the best one uh, we have the bot that periodically say okay do you have news do you have news do you have news and sometimes telegram will say yes i have and this is the message this is the user that is speaking with you this is the command you receive but most of the time telegram will say no i don't have anything for you no i don't have anything for you and this is repeat 
inf in to, to the infinite up to this program here the MI bot is running on the computer hmm? so this is the basic operation this is obviously uh, useful for for us to experiment to develop to try it, this is not how bot uh, in, uh, in production work obviously because it's quite uh, annoying having something to say okay please give me some news please give me some news please give me some news it's quite boring also for telegram and so what happens in our bot we will have first of all apart this continuous process over there we have the user a user any user in the world more than one that open the MEI bot, look for the MEI bot on Telegram, the Telegram application, open the conversation, press start with the bot. And when it press start, uh, Telegram send to the bot answering to that continuous request for update, the start command from the user. And the bot with the start command will greet the user, that is one this is the first feature that we would like to implement. So basically it say hello. Mm -hmm. These greetings start from the bot, again on my computer, go through the internet to the Telegram online service and Telegram dispatch them to the user that asked for starting the conversation, the specific user anywhere in the world, as I said before, that is using Telegram to starting that bot, the conversation to the bot. Then we will have the user that at that point will start typing something on his keyboard, uh, some sentences for the bot, and uh, this, then the user press send, this was sent to the Telegram service, and our bot at a certain point will receive the new message from the user here, and since he's it acts as a parrot, as a HECO service. It will, if it is a text, it will send the response back by getting the same sentence provided by the user and repeating in a, the exact way. They send the response to the Telegram API and then the user get the response from Telegram. If this is, uh, if this bot is running, let's say, in the textual way, it will reply with a textual message, otherwise it will reply with an uh, audio file that the user can play and uh, listen to. So these basically are the steps of the interaction between the bot, the user, and the Telegram service. So to, to wrap up, the user start the conversation with the bot, the bot eventually say hello to the user by passing through Telegram, the telegram service then the user writes something the bot reply with the same exact sentence either in text or in audio and then the user writes something else and the bot reply with the same sentence and so on up to the up to the moment in which this bot is not turned off is turned off and also he start replying and everything so how we can do this in practice and in python in particular so the question is, which library do we choose? So we can, for sure, if we want, go here and, uh, if I found it, uh, read, where are? The bot API. So, for example, we can say, okay, we need to make a request. So we need to, uh, probably I'm anticipating something that you don't, don't know, st you still know, but we need to uh, open, let's say, that address here, hmm, where this is the, probably a portion of the token uh, provided by Telegram, and send a request to this internet address, to this address, HTTP, HTTP, address, uh, proto uh, this address with the HTTP protocol with some specific uh, details. So for example, we should send an application JSON file that attached to this uh, address and then Telegram will reply to us with another 
message, textual message, and we need to parse that message, get the information we need to the message, and resend probably another request to another address, and so on. So we can, we will not, we can work at this level of details by applying this very long list of uh, features and uh, where they are. Uh, doesn't like Firefox um, and so we need to we could for example send a request with an updated ID a message of the type message and so on so something possible uh, quite complex for a certain point of view and very very detailed and this again is something that you can do in python in java by hand whatever you want no programming language involved these are the feature and the way to which a program could communicate in a ling language agnostic way with the telegram uh, api service uh, for creating and interacting with a bot we will not do this you will have to interact with some of these type of uh, um, messages but later on in the course for now these are under the hood and we will choose a library a python library that manage all these information that we saw on the screen for us and just give us python object with the precise information that we want and python function to call for send a message and receive a message everything in python we will never see an http request or we'll never see a long form text format coming from telegram with this so which library do we want to choose obviously we can have tons of options in python or in other languages to interact with this uh, uh, telegram service Typically, uh, this is also something that I wrote here just to explain you one possible process to select uh, some library for your project when you will have one. Uh, so typically, you have, mm, let's say, three options. The first option is look for an official library provided by the online service. Telegram does Telegram offer a Python library official Python library maintained by Telegram for Python If yes, probably it's a very good idea to get that library and use this if not You can or if you don't like because it's very complex for example, you can say okay There is some libraries. There are some libraries that are recommended by Telegram for Python and you, you can have a look at these libraries and choose among them otherwise you can say okay no recommended library no official library let's have a look on google if we find something created by someone that is widely used for interacting with the online service that they would like to interact to in this specific case we can skip the third option because we we don't have telegram does not provide official library for Python so we can also skip option number one but telegram provides four recommended libraries for um, Python in telegram that are also in this website here if you go in example you see a lot of different programming language at a certain point you see Python and you say okay you have these four libraries with their tagline the tagline of the library and the URL of these libraries so we have these four we basically have to choose among these four and now i exemplify a decision process among these four so how can we choose so we have this four telegram the four library and the first one is called in no specific order the first one is called python telegram bot the second one is called telepot the third one is called IOMgram and the fourth one is called te 
tvx.bot API. And these are four libraries. You can open this link. We, we can open this link. We will open this link. And we will see that so these libraries, this one is here. It has some readme here. And this second library is still, is still working. This is the first check. Maybe the link is not working anymore. This is working. And the third one is working. And the fourth one is working. So they are four potential candidates for us. But we, at the end, we just need one. So what we can see by looking at those repositories. We can see, for example, that all the fourth library support Python 3. It is important for us because we are working Python 3. If one of those library will support only Python 2, this will be problematic. So probably that library could be, or we change and move to Python 2 to use that library. Otherwise, probably we should skip that library. No, it's not the case. All the libraries support Python 3. Then, or are they available on PyAP? It's important for us for easing the development if they are available on PyAP because we ju can just install them from PyCharm or from command line. Otherwise, we should, I don't know, clone the repository and put together the files in our project by copying and paste. And then if the library is an update, we should redo the same procedure, clone the repository and copy and paste the file. So not quite easy and comfortable for. So they are available on PIP, on PyAP. Great. They have some sort of documentation. In this case, all four of them have some documentation. This is extremely important because you have uh, some libraries that you have to use. If they don't have a documentation, they don't have example, how can you learn how to use this library? Hmm? So it's mandatory if you are starting something new that this library that you are going to use have some documentation. Hmm? So this is not, this is should, every library provided on the internet should have some documentation. In this case, all four of them have some documentation. This is not something that happens every time. Sometime, several times, libraries doesn't have any documentation attached an example attached. Because maybe was cre were created by a developer, put online, maybe maintained, but the developer doesn't write documentation, doesn't write example for that library. So it's extremely hard for you that are not that developer to use those library. So for example, here we see that this uh, Python uh, Telegram bot has a, a documentation link that go in several uh, options. First one, they have a Telegram bot, a Telegram channel, a Telegram group. It, it seems reasonable. They have a wiki pages with sort of documentation. They have also a tag on Stack Overflow, really important. And uh, uh, they also have some open issue in the project so that you can have a look. In addition, they have, if I properly remind, an example section here with some example written in Python to download and use. So this is good for us. This other libraries work more or less similarly. So for example, this one as an example folder as before and as some documentation, this form of references and that probably go on another website. Yeah. Uh, with all the documentation on how to use that function, that method. So all four of them have more or less this information. Maybe some libraries has more example and less documentation. Other are a lot of information about documentation and example and various combination of this. So the starting point is quite good. So how can we choose among these four libraries? So, First of all, we can check which of them are maintained. Was a library updated two days ago and then four days ago, or it was updated three years ago? But probably if it was updated three years ago, it's not a good idea to invest your time in learning something that probably is dead. 
or almost that. And probably since it, they, for example, was updated, let's say three years ago, they will not get all the new update, all the last three years of update on the bot functions. So maybe the function you're looking for is missing from that library. So in this case, we have that Python Telegram bot and the IUM gram are the only two library, libraries that seems to be actively maintained. And how we can know that well, for example, we can have a look at this date here. So we know that in this case, the Telegram folder is the folder that contains the, the library itself, the other are the example and so on. And in this library, it was updated seven days ago, one week ago, quite, quite recent. And we can also have a look in the commits uh, just to say if it was, um, an update after three years of nothing, but we say, okay, this is March, February, February, February. So it seemed maintained update from the, the main developer or other people. And this is one. The other, then for example, this telepot, this telepot was updated 10 months ago. So no one has written one line of code in 10 months. The other one, the IUM gram instead, was uh, updated six days ago. Again, good, one week, reasonable. And the last one was updated again almost one year ago, 10 months ago. So probably if we have to choose among four, these two go on the back of our list because they are not, they seem not actively maintained. The other two are more promising, let's say. Then, and this is one factor. So we can for sure say, okay, among these four, we concentrate on Python Telegram bot and Iogram. Let's keep the other two. Then one thing that we can check is uh, how the community behave with these libraries how other people are, how many people are using that library, are appreciating the library, are tagging that library. Hmm? So for example, we can check among the other things, the number of commits of those libraries, the number of stars of those libraries, the number of forks, the number of watches on GitHub, the number of results uh, on Stack Overflow and so on. How responsive is the, the developer, how, had, how many developer use that library in practice? Because more people use the library probably is less probable that the library will be dismissed and you have more example to a more solution to your problem probably, if, you, if a lot of people look for that. So among Python, Telegram, Bot and the other library, we see, for example, so let's close this one and this one. We see, for example, this, this Aeogram has 200 and something stars and was watched by 20 people and was, it has around 1,000 commits. Uh, I think that is quite uh, recent as a library. With respect, for example, to this, that has 7,000 star mm, versus 200. 300 watches versus 20 and it has something like around 2,000 commits so more the double of the commits so this could be interesting and 60 release in the entire life of the library and here just 26 so this probably is newer than the other library so we have okay the first one seem more mm, promising more used so we can probably shift to the first one. And then we have to also notice uh, this, that this library only support Python 3.7, while the other library support Python 2.7, 3.4, 3.5, and 3.6, and also 3.7, but they are retrocompatible in this case. So this is quite a bit more 
uh, used or so compatible with different system with different Python versions. So for example, if you have um, a Linux operating system and you are using the default Python version, Python 3 version, probably you are stuck on Python 3.5. So you can use this, you cannot use, or the, use the other library. So I think that the other library is promising maybe to consider in one or two years, but right now, by all this consideration, we can choose with ease and confidence the Python Telegram bot for all these reasons. So we will work with this Python Telegram bot. Before using the Python Telegram bot, let me just uh, better define command versus non-command in, uh, in Telegram. Command messages start with a backslash and are well common, like start, edit, help, or whatever. There are some predefined command messages like start, like edit, like help, and you can also create your own commands. While non-command messages are free text messages, and for free text I mean text, photos, images, videos, whatever, but in free form, not restricted from a specific keyword. And in our case, we would like to send greeting with the start command and the e cooperation instead will be performed for every uh, non-common message. So text in the first case and uh, yeah, text in both cases in reality. So when we have a free text, we will perform a non-command operation for greeting the user, we will have the start command instead. So let's open, first of all, let's have a look at the documentation here and the wiki pages in particular. So this library has a wonderful tutorial on how to create your first bot with this library in Telegram. And this is a step-by-step -step tutorial. So for example, let's say, okay, to get started, open a Python command line and write this. Uh, do, do, you, do you know what, uh, what they mean for Python command line? Yes, and the, the, the the following question is, what is a Python command line to check if the yes is a real yes? No, it's not the, the, the it's not only, not particularly the underlying part, the, the bottom part of PyCharm, no. Python, but probably we will never told you. I will I never told you. Um, if you open, uh, command prompt in Windows or on Linux or whatever. And let me open this bigger. So we use Python typically in PyCharm and environment. Python is, uh, as an interpreter, I called it interpreter in, in this meaning that uh, Python is not a compiled language, is interpreted line by line as you write the source file. And so if you write uh, here, or in a, in a Windows command prompt, Python or Python 3, you get, you can interact with the interpreter. So here you can write Python code and have immediately every response. So if you write print hello, it will print hello. If I print a equal three, it get this variable and I can say print a, and it will print three. So this is like working in, it's a simpler version of working in PyCharm, but it's quite useful for quickly experimenting very brief portion of code. So to experiment with this library, they say, okay, open the terminal here, write Python or Python three, and just put there the two um, instruction that I give you to get started. We will not obviously do this here because it's quite, uh, it's not particularly friendly to write a long program here because it's line by line. 
to be executed, but we will move to um, PyCharm to do this, and we'll use Python as before to quit this uh, um, interactive uh, um, Python uh, command line. You have to just write quit with open and close parentheses. So let's open PyCharm. And let's create a new project, as always. Let's call it Python bot. Then I will put it on uh, uh, GitHub as usual. So here, we, there we are. Uh, empty project we can create as the other time a python file that we can call it uh, mei bot uh, text dot dot py no oops Refactor. okay then we have to use the uh, python bot library so to use the Python bot library, first of all, we need to install that, install the library from pip. So from PyCharm, you can go in the preferences and uh, go in your project hmm, file, that is project uh, menu that is called Python bot, like the name of the project. If you open this, you have a project interpreter that show you which is the interpreter that are, you are using, that is Python 3.7 in my case, and all the libraries that are already installed on this computer for, for that interpreter. And so you can press the plus symbol here in the bottom and you see a list of other Python packages that you can install. So let's check for Python uh, Telegram but you see that there is a Python Telegram bot uh, that has a website, that is a version. And so we can press install package. And if you have internet, uh, it will say package, name of the package, successfully installed. So we install the package, we can close it, this window, we can press OK here. And in this moment, in this computer is installed this library, we can use it as suggested by the, uh, this tutorial. So this tutorial say, okay, first thing is import an updater and create an object that is called, for example, updater with the token that is provided by the Telegram bot, by Botfather. So let's just for now copy this and put this here let me increase this so notice that i have no errors because it successfully installed the library if i wrote uh, from telegram.x to import update before it will give me uh, an error because there was no before there was no library uh, to import this so we have imported this and created this so since uh, we are trying to write a program uh, for real, let's add a main function or the equivalent of the main function. And let's put this in this main function here. Basically. We can also add a um, comment here at doc string that say the mei bot will greet you and it will repeat everything uh, you type obviously everything and not this thing here okay then so this the tutorial say okay just import the updater and uh, copy and paste yeah, yeah but if the 
uh, uh, I have on, under PyCharm on uh, not on macOS, it should be uh, under file probably. Settings. It should look like this. And you have on the on the sidebar project to point a colon the name of the project. And obviously Python bot is my name of the project. If you call it in a different way, you have a different name. Right? No, you have to press the plus button plus button on the bottom and install the package. Python minus telegram minus bot. If you start typing Python minus telegram, it will give you the proper suggestion. Right? Okay, can I? Okay, yes. So I was telling you that we need this updater. This updater is the, the things that is responsible to get updates the um, orange line on the slides before update among my between my bot and the telegram service hmm? that continue ask do you have a date do you have a date or other uh, methods to get updates from telegram as a service and we need this token this token i forgot as every year to uh, open uh, the telegram application on the computer so i will just uh, um, copy this try to copy this no so I type this here I don't understand if it's a zero or oh, oh. so let me copy from here uh, one sec okay so this is the token that uh, telegram provide you when you create a new bot so here we have this updater that is that as i said before responsible to uh, handle the communication and authorize also my bot with respect to the telegram service then we need to uh, handle two uh, type of messages the first one is the start command and the second one is the echo service so when a user types something you just get the answer of the same message so to create these two elements that pi the telegram called handler the first one is a command handler the second one is a non-command handler a message handler for example we have to create another object starting from this update and we can call it dp and this object is uh, the dispatcher hmm? that is responsible as the name says to dispatch things among the bot and the user hmm? with this dispatcher we can create these two handler hmm? we need a command handler for the start command
um, this function here if you have a look at the, the tutorial you find this i will not for time purposes but in the same documentation you have here at a certain point you say okay if you want you can add a dispatcher in this way with the start handler with the command handler start and start so we are going to do the same we need a command handler that is the command handler for the start message backslash start and when the user types backslash start this program should call a function that we don't have still defined that we call start just to remi remember so we have two errors here one is because the start because the start function does not exist yet and the other is because the program doesn't know uh, what is this command handler because we need to import the command handler mm? so remember that we just import updater from telegram the telegram extension we just not up in get everything just updater so we need also to get command handler here and the errors goes away and then we need to define this function a function that is called start so that these errors goes away and every end every handler has two parameter that can receive one is uh, uh, an object representing the bot and the other is an object representing an update that is coming from the user so just two parameters that we can or, or not use so we created this command handler then we need another handler that is our eco service so as before as add handler we will not create a command handler we are creating a message handler and as before we need to import it this message handler similarly to before needs not the command because this is not a command we will need for sure the name of the function and we can call it echo and here instead of the command uh, the message handler would like to know which type of message we would like to parse we are accepting text we are accepting photos we're accepting text and photos what we need so we need basically text for now so this library has a filters um, structure that has various fields one of these is uh, text so we can obviously import filters and so if you then type filters dot you see that is you can have a filter for everything for animation only audio only comments only so similar before games so everything that is every object that is supported by telegram we just need text we only would like to call the eco method eco function when we receive a text from a user so if the user send us a photo we basically don't do anything we only intercept text and when the user send us a text we the program call a echo function that we need to define before so here we need to define as for the start an echo function with bot update and a colon i put this pass just to uh, close the function and avoid any other error then we will remove this pass so the main behavior of our uh, bot is we created basically the bot and authorized the bot we create a dispatcher to handle commands and uh, text messages we now re have to well start the the, the bot and keep uh, the bot uh, say die in a grateful way 
not in a strange way so but the important things here is that we need to start the, po the bot starting the bot will mean that we, we run this program it will ask continuously to the telegram service do you have any news for me do you have any update for me do you have an update for me and so on so uh, to start the, 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 the bot we rely on the updater uh, message the updater object and we use this start polling function so it start continuously check with the telegram service for any update and then we have this updater idle to avoid uh, uh, to run this continuously up to we interrupt the program and then it should die without giving it any error to us and gratefully so these are the basic element of the both create handle things and start communicating and keep them al keep it alive we can have here we could have multiple command handler and multiple message handler they are executed in order by the bot so now we need to let the bot do something so when we receive the start yeah i don't understand why uh, we have to import uh, that type that kind of library telegram.x and not uh, i mean the, the correct name telegram file. because yeah it's a smart question right because uh, um, the designer of that python telegram bot library decide that inside that library there were multiple uh, packages that are not called as the library basically so they say okay inside this there is a telegram.txt library and then there is a telegram dot something else library so you they decided not to have the name of the library representing the name of the packages okay basically this is the reason uh, last time i told you that that import should represent the name of the file of the python file so probably in the library if we have a look you should find a file called telegram.py or telegram.x.py and not a file named python telegram bot the python telegram bot is the the container of all these packages that provide all these function so it happens quite frequently that the library installed with pip is different from the package imported in python as a name okay we uh, have to uh, decide what to do when the user start a bot so here we need to write something so when the user start a bot we receive the start command here and the start function will be called so here we should greet the user so are we so we basically we have to say hello we send back hello to the user how we can do this we can either rely with the bot object or the update object it's the same we can use the update object the update object as a inside a message that is the message that we receive from the user and we can reply in textual form to this message so from the update object we get the message field and we that is the message that we receive from the user and we can call the function reply text because we are going to reply in textual form and the text to be replied to and, and stop the, the start meters is just this something that greets the user for us the echo function instead is a little bit more complex because we need to do two operations the first one is get the message that we receive from the user and then we need to send back the same message so we don't have to send a, a fixed string but the same exact message that the user is providing to us so basically we can 
first of all we need to get the text from the user and then we can reply to the text to reply to the text we can use the same method the same instruction at line 5 so update.message.reply text to reply so I, I start writing that also I copy and paste that where we don't want to, to send hello and then we need to get the message so we can create a variable re repeated text and in that variable we have to put the message we receive and the message we receive as told you before is in this update.message.text because the message could also have some other element in addition or uh, replacing the text the text there could be a, an image for example a video a game so we are interesting only in the text to get the text of the message and so we can basically say okay i get the text and i send back the text the same identical text then if we would like to do something uh, uh, so, so two things an alternative is writing bot dot send message and send the message in the proper chat these require more parameter we will see them before and i will put you an example on github of this and before this we can also do something a little bit more uh, to, to to have the bot behave as a human a real a human let's say so what happens on telegram when a person is writing yeah that you see Sorry. the user is typing is writing and so in this case uh, we, we don't see that message because we just the bot is not really typing on a keyboard but we can send the same action and simulate the same action so if we import uh, uh, from telegram this way this time uh, uh, import chat action hmm? chat action is a collection of every chat action like typing s uploading a video uploading a file and so on that telegram can use so here before doing this we can say bot dot send um, action Oops, send chat action and we can send we have two parameters the first one is the chat ID we would like to send the right message to the right people this bot could receive a contemporary multiple message from different people so we would like to be sure to answer to the right person this is uh, hidden from the update.message reply text it will ensure that this operation is performed but when you, we use bot.send something you have to declare explicitly the chat id you are going to reply to this chat id is contained in the update message in the, in the update object as before so we have to say that uh, um, <clears throat> the chat id so update dot message dot chat underscore id so we would like to send this action to that specific chat that is the chat from where the conversation is coming and then we can use this chat action dot and here you have a list of possible action record a audio record video typing upload audio and so on so we can choose typing so when we interact with this uh, chatbot we will see briefly because this is not a, a re very long uh, operation typing mei bot is typing and then we will receive the message hmm? the real response so uh, before trying this because i didn't uh, open telegram and i don't want to put uh, mm, my telegram on youtube basically um, so at the start we will we will try this um, after i will stop the registration and we will try this together so let me amend this with the vocal parrot the vocal echo 
So basically, we can save this and create a copy of this because most of this program will be the same. Uh, copy. Let me call it Amibot Voice dot pi where where basically the main function here will remain the same because we just have to create the bot authorize it have a command handler a message handler that get text and answer with an audio but it get text and so everything will be the same we need just to change things here in the echo function because we don't need to answer with text we need to answer with audio so to do this we have the text to speech dilemma to solve because we receive a text and we need to produce an audio so we need a library to do this or a service to do this so among the various library there is this gtts where tts stands for text to speech that is a library is on pip and it takes some text and use the google text to speech api as provided by google and give you starting from a text some audio file you can choose which type of audio file telegram supports among the other mp3 and this library is able to provide you with mp3 so it's a good match so we can install this gtts in our program and then use it together with our python telegram bot library and I think that this is, yeah. Uh, then if you want, uh, by yourself, you can also experiment with other things like performing an inverted echo or ask for the weather by leveraging on other PyAP libraries if you want, like this Yahoo Weather library and so on. But it's something just if you want to play with this stuff before Monday. Uh, so we need to install that gtt library as we did before so here we just type gtts and we have some option the plain gtts is google text-to-speech python library to interface with google translate text-to-speech api and so this is the library that we want we can install it and as before we can close this close this close this and we can first of all import in this case the package is called G gtts as the library just not capital and we need to import gtts like the library so with all the capital letter in place to perform the operation so what we need to do here instead of this I will delete this is no instead of this is let me delete after first of all we would like not to send the action typing we would like to send uh, an action related to the audio so for example we can use the upload audio function uh, type instead of typing so the tele the bot which will show you as a, a mei bot is uploading a v an audio file that is something more or less realistic then as before we get we have to get the repeated message from the user because we need to convert this message in an mp3 file and then We need to perform two operations. The first one is uh, to convert this text message in an MP3 file that will be so saved on my computer, and then we need to send 
this mp3 file to the telegram service so that it can be received from by the user mm -hmm. so we can create a variable let's we call tts with extreme imagination again and we we have the gtts uh, constructor that ask you for two information the first one is the text to translate from text to speech and the language of the text so the text is this repeated text as before and the language since this is a english speaking class will be n e n english you could also choose italian or french or whatever you want they support all the languages that is supported by google translate so you have a quite a large choice so this operation called the google service transform the text in speech and give you back the information you need to perform a two operation one operation now save the mp3 you cannot reuse the tts object inside telegram they are not the same things telegram wants an mp3 file to pass to the user so we can we should have a tts.save that save whatever it is contained in tts on a file that i just call it echo.mp3 for simple pur purposes so a local file obviously if we have multiple user probably we have some trouble at certain point because we have just a file named always in the same time so if we have five users that contemporary use the chat we save we overwrite five times the echo.mp3 file so a clever way of naming that file should be used but for our purposes we will leave this it's just a warning in uh, we will not planning to have five people together using this for now and we accept the error if any so we have the file saved on disk and we will find it after so i can say bot.send not text not chat action we need to send a voice message and as before for the send chat action we need the chat id and we need the voice message to be sent so the chat id is this one and the voice message this is the chat id and the voice message is the echo.mp3 file we need to open the echo mp3 file for telegram like we opened files uh, normal files in python so open uh, echo.mp3 and this is uh, we need to open this file in read mode over here in read mode and we also need to say that this file is um, and we also need to say that this file is not a textual file but it's a binary file because it's an mp3 file so this open function needs the name of the file mp3 on disk with its position if any and the way to open this file reading only not writing and binary because this is a binary file not a textual file and that's it if we run this we should be able to get a text perform the conversion in a voice message and send back the voice message so now we can after stopping the the video recording we can try this before let me remind you that the solution for lab number two were published on github and uh, uh, a linked here and that where is okay for Monday because it's needed to support you 
in the next lecture we have the, sec the third reading to do that is structured as before as the one before so you have a couple of uh, some slides from the 2017 edition of this course you have a uh, overview on what is a client on the web what is a server on the web you have a brief introduction on the http protocol just to have a idea of what it is and a brief introduction to html and we will leverage on this next time in two times in two we in next week when we start speaking first on database and then on web technologies so now i will stop the registration and try with if everything work as expected with telegram so let's stop here